Okay, let's get started. So, uh, who has an idea for this one? So we are at the first puzzle and black is going to sacrifice the exchange on F3. Why is that strong? So here we have this idea of sacrificing the exchange, but we are not left with an extra rook. We actually, we have to get rid of both our rooks in this by exchanging, uh, sacrificing the exchange. Yeah, so, so far so good. And then queen takes g4, that was what happened in the game. Yeah, so nice outpost on e4, that's what I get in the chat. Um, knight is passive on g1, that's correct. So, um, so these are good observations. I agree. Um, and then see what else? Let's try to, to look at concrete targets. Let's say h5 is weak, right? Uh, in the black position, there might be b7, e6, h6. But um, so the idea of white playing rook f8 is probably a move we have to, to think about. So. Otherwise, it's very hard to get to, let's say, e6, because f6 is defended. b7 is only if, if black really makes a mistake. I mean, rook b1, we can always play b6 if we want. So rook f8 is really the move that tries to put some pressure. And so this position is also a little bit about what are white's options? And then if you find out white doesn't really have anything, then it's, it's easier to, to make a decision like this because h5 is going to drop. And by the way, we defend e8 after that. So, so there, there are two approaches. One is to, um, to look at all your own options, which is great. But um, if you, if you look at your position as, oh, your, my opponent cannot really attack a lot. Um, you could say it's a more defensive approach, but that's also the more strategic approach of these exchange sacrifices. So white cannot really do a lot to attack black here. So let's see how the game went. Um, if rook f8, then we check. And then if king in h2, we take h5 with check. And then if rook goes back, we also take h5. So it doesn't really work. Um, so queen a1, I believe, was played in the game to get the queen back. Still defending that pawn on c3. Black took here. And now black could play king b d7. And now simply chasing the white rook back. And queen h3. So it becomes very clear now that white doesn't have any active play. And here he simply resigned. Because, uh, this is going to be nasty. Yeah, so there wasn't really any play for white. So, um, and then you, you can uh, consider for yourselves um, if you would have done the exchange sacrifice in the game because Somehow it, it does take some courage. Um, okay, let's move on to the next one. So let me start a little bit earlier in this one. And um, this game is a little bit older. And nowadays, this is a very typical French position and it's very closed and these are actually fascinating lines where white sacrifices this pawn just to have an open a file and then also have this option of getting out here with the bishop. So black has taken that pawn and is ready to, 
let's say, protect the knight, b5, bishop d7. So black already has a pawn. So exchange sacrifices is, the idea of exchange, exchange sacrifice is not too far off. But in these positions, nowadays, most players know they play something like knight g5. And then the knight drops back if necessary. And then you start pushing the f pawn. So, so we have to break on, on, on f5. So the way white played in, in the game is, is, is basically just uh, wrong. It helps black. He played knight h4. The same idea, f4, f5. The problem is that black can play knight g6. And then after he took, now black took back. And now it's very hard to play f5, also because the h file is open. So the white king could get very weak if we start playing g4, f4, f5. So so white has quite a passive position already. So we get to this. And now in this position. So why is, um, you probably guessed it, rook takes d6. Why is this a strong exchange sacrifice? And again, we can look at concrete attacking points. Well, f7, probably not going to happen. Uh, b5, a5, everything is closed for now. d6 is probably going to drop. Then we have two pawns up. Here's a weakness, probably here too. So, so this is actually why this is a strong sacrifice. Why is basically doomed to passivity. So let's see what happened. Let's see, black is black would like to go into this end game. So basically, he's just forcing the exchange of queens now. Yeah, white's bishop is also this this idea. It, it's like in the stone wall. I think Kramnik said that once that uh, the white bishop is hitting the same wall as the black bishop. So uh, so you could compare those two bishops. Um, this is definitely black's goalie. We just need to keep uh, some of our points defended, and uh, we have the knight and other pieces who can do the attacking. There's a lot of after in, in the end game, king can go to d6, black can play in the center, black can push b4, black has all the active options. And then, so we, we don't mind having this bishop that's slightly passive at the moment, it's our goalkeeper. Later it can become active, who knows? C2 might be a weakness. So uh, white's bishop is passive, but it's also, it's very hard to find real attacking points in, in black's position, that, that's a real problem. Because not only the bishop is, also the rooks are, simply because um, concrete attacking points, there, are, there aren't really any. So black is just all the time in the world here. So this is, of course, a nice idea. Now black is just holding back f4 and planning to exchange queens. He went to b4 here. Okay, and then just went back with the rook. So white is actually offering this pawn on h3, but black doesn't want this pawn. Maybe king g2, rook h1, and then either black has to swap that one rook or the rook maybe comes in here and finds something to attack. So black actually doesn't want this pawn on h3. So he doesn't want the white rook into his position. Okay. So let's just see what happened here. Um, white doesn't really have a lot here. Now d4 is weak too. And now the rook takes the a, a file. So 
basically white has no play here. Um, and maybe white just resigned here in this position. Maybe they broke a game off, um, a join game, and then you know, white just resigned. So black is winning. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Why is rook takes f3 here strong? And what's our follow up? What's the follow up to the exchange sacrifice? Take. Yep, yeah. Matt, that's correct. So we're trying to hold back the white pawn. So getting a knight to g6 is a great idea. So that's what black played. And here black, we just stay here with a knight because we don't want to allow either h4, f4. So there's no reason to jump in yet. And again, we have a position that is close, semi-closed. So white doesn't really have, now b6 happened. Trying to get that bishop out here maybe at some point. Or maybe to b7 and then, so we definitely have some weakness there and the white king. So, so let's look at concrete targets again. It's, it's a good way to look at the position. E6 can be attacked. And that is basically black's only real weakness. And then white is trying to play the pawn forward. But as long as this knight stays here, then it's not really going to happen. If bishop h5, we can just move that knight. Then we can just place pieces on these dark squares here. So basically why is it just passive here? It's just, um, and white has so many pieces, he can improve his position. So in this position, black isn't even a, a pawn up, but white has no play. So, and white is, maybe, these rooks are not really doing a lot. What black, white is trying now is just, uh, or protect these weaknesses and then maybe be ready. So, okay, queen h3 is attacking e6. Now black goes into action. Um, yeah, bishop b7 was going to come anyway. We are almost trapping the queen, but next we can take on e5 here. So this looks, and then the, this d pawn is just running down the board. So this looks awful for white. So he took on e6. And now black simply went into this. Still even amount of pawns, but e4 is, or f2 is hanging now. So black is just, black is just winning here. Getting out of the pin. Yeah, white doesn't really have anything here. And now a little trick and white resigned. So white can really look stupid sometime in these, after these exchange sacrifices with no play. And uh, so this was this was kind of another case. White tried hard to, to, to get something going, but it, it, it was black was firmly in control here. So, uh, okay. Let's move on to the next one. Let's see. In this position, it is black to move.
So why is rook takes f4 strong here? So let me remind you of this structure again. Um, the bishop here is our goalie, just defending this weak point. And then this knight is also very useful, protecting, covering some square so the rook cannot enter, let's say, on, on a7. And the knight is also controlling the center. So we have this solid structure in the center as well. And then we have other pieces that can do some, some attack. So let's see. Yeah. Taking on c3 first. Now d4 is hanging too. So there really are multiple weaknesses here. Okay, so let's take to this position. White is trying to be active. Knight g4. Queen takes f4. h3 is defending the knight. Yeah, so this is Dalmatov. He was a very strong player. Um, Tvoretsky's student, I believe. Uh, now he plays e5, and I, I find that's very instructive. So, uh, so he's simply going for to activate his pieces and get an attack against the white king. So even if the position opens up slightly now, Black has so many things going with weakness on c2 and all these pawns in the center. So Black simply transforms a, a position here. So he could have taken this pawn on d4, but instead he goes for... So maybe he, maybe he wasn't too happy about something like, I'm not sure, maybe the rook will land on a7, maybe. Or if queen takes e3, then maybe the rook can land on f7. Suddenly, white's rooks may become very active. So that might be one reason. So instead, he's going for the initiative himself. I do think that black can play something like this and then king g7 with a, with a fine position. Um, so, yeah, one idea is rook d1, then we can play rook f8. So we don't get hammered on the f6 square. So basically saying that at all these end games are just great for black because these, this, these central pawns, we don't even care about this h6 pawn. We are just going to win on our central pawns here. But okay, Dalmatov, he decides to go e5 here and then simply um, force white to take this endgame. And then here's another cool move, king g7. If he takes on d4 immediately, then rook a7 and white is very active with the rooks. King has to go back to the back rank now and then maybe the other rook can come into b1, for instance. So... So he doesn't want to allow that. So he simply played king g7. And white is trying to get some counterplay going. Yeah, let's see, rook d5. Maybe it's rook e1 here. And then something like this. And the king can also move forward here, and we have these pawns running down the board. So a very dynamic way to play this and finish the game. So let's see. To here. Knight a3. And then rook d1 is coming up. Yeah, and white resigned. Yeah, I don't know. He could have played rook d1 here. I'm not sure why he played king f7. 
So that was a strong sacrifice. Let's go on to the next position. Okay, so here you had to do a little bit of calculation. So what happens after knight takes d4? Knight takes d4. And then if bishop takes, then we take the knight here. It's fine for black. So the critical move is bishop takes f8. Then we take on c2, attacks the rook. If the rook moves, we can take the bishop. So bishop d6 in between move. Queen c3, rook c1. And something like this. It's very interesting. Um, so we have this pass d pawn. We have an active queen. We can consider going b2. We have as a target here. As it is now, our bishop is starting to wake up a bit, pointing this way. White has a bishop that is not doing a lot at the moment on d6. So we have several things. We have a passed pawn here. We'd be able to attack a2 and maybe the queenside pawn over here. So black has a slight advantage here. White will try to defend something like queen f3. Simply because white's idea is to get the rook in here and trying to take this pawn out because there's a pin on the C file. So what black does not have to exchange queens. Black can try to target those queen side pawns. So this is a very interesting position. Um, I tried, I looked at this and then simply going for that pawn. And then white could try to exchange rooks, which is something um, white wants to do when black is an exchange down. So then we could get to a position like this. And black should be pretty safe in this position. If, again, if we look at potential targets, uh, this bishop on e6 is basically covering all our weaknesses around the king. Then we have these two passed pawns, and we still have the knight and the queen that uh, can support him. So this knight can probably stay here for a while. Worst case, um, we could probably play the bishop in to, to defend it all. So this is fine for black. I believe only black can try to win this. So, um, so that was an interesting line, but definitely OK for black. Okay, let's move forward to the next position. See, this was a tricky one. So here the exchange sacrifice is not so obvious. So what did you do here with black? What's the good idea? And again, we, we noticed that black already has a pawn. So you're already a pawn up. So you might consider exchange sacrifices as an option. Obviously, white has sacrificed this pawn to get some attack going, knight to d6. So any ideas here? Okay, so white played knight to b3. So let's see, taking that knight out is a bad idea. Now g7 is hanging. So there's mate. And if h6, then white is simply entering on the dark squares. Um, here we can take with the rook. So, so that, that's a bad idea for black to take that knight. But knight b3 is paralyzing white on the queen side. So let's say, take that rook. 
And now queen c4. And basically, white is defending the queen. Has to defend the bishop. And then black simply takes this pawn. So this knight is totally paralyzing uh, white's rooks. Black has the open file. Two extra pawns. There's pressure on d4. b2 might be a target. In black's position, it's, it's not so easy to find something to attack. So black is fairly solid here. So that's why it's a great position for black. So let's see a few more moves. It's actually black that forces the position into an endgame. So rook c7 is anticipating uh, a queen exchange where the rook cannot land on d7 later. So let's see, a4. And now queen e4 was the idea. So, See. Yeah. So black is simply willing to to give up that e4 pawn to get going. I believe if we take here now we have a move like a3. So white is tied down and now rook c4 and b4 and white just resigned. Um, Bishop c1 is coming up, b2 was a weakness, everything we also have, and we can play a3. So black's pieces are simply playing well together here. So, so that was a great idea. Okay, let's take the next one. Did anyone solve this one? Number seven. Maybe you have seen this example. It's in one of Doretzky's uh, books. It's again, Dalmatov. So obviously, white's next move. What do you think white is going to play next? Yeah, that's a pretty good idea. And get the knight to e7, and then take back on f5. So um, that's a pretty good idea. He did it slightly, uh, he wanted to, to, to take back with that bishop on d7. And I think he had another plan in my mind for that knight. He wanted that knight over here, maybe c4. So, but the idea is correct enough. He played bishop e8, and after bishop d3, he played bishop g6. And again, we have, um, let's say he played rook g1 first, then queen f8, and then take, take. And again, this is a position where black doesn't even have a pawn. But uh, here we have a position. These, these are the two double S bishop, typical French. And it's very hard to see what, what white can attack in black's position. So this bishop is basically keeping everything defended. E6 is not an issue. It's probably not going to be an attack over here. It's very difficult to open up the king side. So it, the only pawn storm is the H pawn, but we can deal with that fairly easily. Um, then over here, then knight a5 is probably coming up. We can always play b6. There are no real weaknesses that white can attack. So and black has lots of ways to, to improve this position. Rook c8 and c5 is one option. We can also maybe go into the get the rook all the way to f8 and then try to use the f file, which is half open. So, so this is just black has all the play here. White has all the weaknesses. 
So, uh, so this is how the game continues. White is defending that c2 pawn for now. Um, black doesn't even mind this exchange, which gives him a passed pawn on the a file. So it just shows you how many options black have in, the, in this position. Knight goes to a5, blocking the a file, can jump to c4 later. So now black simply move this a pawn down the board, putting pressure on c2. Some air for the king. So it's white is simply defending. Queen f8, extra support, support to the a3 pawn. Maybe he wants to, to get this rook to f7. So now we just get our bishop back to f5. And, and now there was this bishop sacrifice. If rook takes, then we have b3, I believe. Or maybe even a2 immediately. b3 looks pretty good. So this is what happened. Queen e8. Now b4 is a target, and he's going for it. And the final transformation. White has weaknesses everywhere. The king is weak, d4. Um, so in this position, white resigned. So there's both rook b1, d4 is hanging, the white king is open. So very nice game for black. And you, you get the sense that, that white was never really in the game. White wasn't really able to find target in, in, in the black position. So it's one of those games you wonder what, what went wrong afterwards. Uh, you were up a, a clear exchange and then lost anyway. So let's take the last one. So this is, um, this is a very complicated example. Um, so how are you going to follow up on rook takes c6, which was played in, I'm not sure it was played in the game. It was, yeah, that was the move, rook takes c6. So what's the idea, what's the follow up? So this is actually one of those where black or white sacrifice in exchange for initiative. Yeah, uh, something with bishop e4. Let's see. Uh, so, so black is lacking development. And so actually white played d5 here. And that's a tough move. But the idea is to get the knight to d4 and then really try to target c6. So it's really powerful, but it's one of those exchange sacrifices where white is simply playing for the identity. And now let's see the options here. If, if pawn takes here, then we have bishop b5. That doesn't work. If we take with that pawn, then e6 is an option. Just opening up everything. If the pawn takes a knight e5, bishop is landing on g6. This is pretty horrible. Um, if queen takes, then bishop c3, threatening rook e2. Unfortunately, knight has to go to e7 and block everything. And then knight comes in. So this is just, um, black has no way to get out of this. The pressure on the e file, on e7, c6. Um, this is just... Uh, this is just over. So black will never get the king safe. So let's see the he took with the queen. And now bishop e4 comes with gain of tempo. And now rook c2. So the idea is if rook b2, then black can block with that knight. So instead, by attacking c6 immediately, uh, we force knight to the knight to go to e7, which is horrible, of course. And now the rook can get to b7. Knight d5, queen goes back, knight attacks c6. And now white even has this, 
knight takes e6, bishop takes d5, because the queen is coming to g6. So castle, queen g6, bishop goes back to defend against mate on g7, and now bishop e4 is threatening mate. If queen takes here, we have a mate in two. So something like this, and then bishop takes h6, and uh, yeah, so this is um, now after takes queen takes the bishop joins in the attack as well. Um, so a very complicated example. You'll have a chance to look at look look more depth at it when you when I send out the database. But this is again one of these examples where white, when white sacrifices an exchange in French, it's usually like this to try to use an immunity. So, otherwise, it's um, it's usually black who does the exchange sacrifice for strategical reasons. So, uh, as we talked about, okay, that's all for today, and um, I will see you. You're welcome. I will see you next time.